Hello and welcome back to this channel. So today's tutorial is going to be about Procreate 5X. So we're going to look at all the new features that Procreate has now with their latest update. So before starting off, make sure you have updated your Procreate as well as your iPad OS to 14. So this is really important because a lot of features like text scribble, etc. won't work if it's not on the latest iPad OS. So let's jump into all new features, shall we? So first off, our private layers. So what are private layers? So for example, you can actually click on add. And if you just scroll right here towards the left, you can see that it says something called as insert a private file. The same thing for a photo. And you can also do a take a photo as a take a private photo. So what does this do? So when I click on insert a private photo, and I'll just go to my gallery and insert a photo like this, I can draw some stuff and things like that. Now, if I go to time lapse and if I play replay, you won't see that private layer at all. So you can use this private layer as a reference layer. You could have your reference image and stuff like that, but still you can have your time lapse where this won't be visible at all. So yeah, that's a cool thing, which is very nice. Next up is text scribble. So what is text scribble? So if you go ahead into the settings, click on add and add text like you would normally do. And if you click here and let's just say, hello it automatically converts it into text so yeah you can basically write whatever you want and then it's going to convert that into text isn't that cool it actually works really well and the thing is it doesn't work just on the text it also works for your color palettes for example if you click here and then if you write whatever you want i mean that won't recognize that but okay <laughs> you can just undo that and click on done and you can work with that as well so anywhere in this artboard where you have an option to actually use text you can use this scribble option so the next feature is reference so previously when you want to add a reference image uh, to your artwork you usually had to do a split window thingy on ipad so that you could place your reference photo here and then you couldn't work on your illustration here and the problem with that was that uh, it used to take up a, a considerable amount of space so you didn't have a lot of space to work with on your procreate but now procreate has this amazing thing where you go to settings and you go to canvas and you click on reference so one thing you should notice is that a lot of users might have something called as face paint right here but it's not available on my uh, iPad. And uh, as far as I know, it's not supported on all, all iPads. So unfortunately, I won't be covering the, the face paint option, but you will definitely see it here somewhere over here. Okay, so when you get this, you have two options called canvas or image. We're gonna click on image and then click on import image. So it'll take you to your gallery and here you can pick up any photo that you want and use it as a reference image. So you can just keep it here and then we'll just draw whatever we see in this illustration or in the photo. There you go. It makes life super simple. And once you're done, you can just click on this button here and it goes away. And the next more important thing is color palettes. Okay. So now with color palettes, you have a lot of different things that you can do. If you click on this plus button, there are so many different things, which is create new palette, new from camera, from file, from photos. So let's just go ahead and click on new from photos. So if I click on that, it takes you to your gallery and you can pick any photograph that you want and it'll automatically pick up all the colors that you have in that image. So it need not be artwork, for example, and just go new from photos. And uh, let me just pick up this one and it creates all the colors that's there in that photograph. And this is so helpful because now you don't have to pick individual colors and put them in your artboard. I mean, put them in your palette. So this makes life pretty easy, actually. And the same with new from camera. And uh, let me just show you. So if I go here and uh, select something like this and click on this, it actually saves the color palette from that particular artwork or even a photograph or anything you can do, you know, landscape or anything. So it's pretty easy, especially when you're drawing a landscape, you just take a photo of it using your palette. And then you already have all the colors that you need to paint that landscape in Procreate. Super simple, isn't it? Similarly, you have something called new from file that you can obviously import uh, swatches into your color palette. Next up is color fill. 
So now if you go into selection tool, you see a lot of things right here. And one option is color fill. So what does this do? So now I'm going to go ahead and choose some color because I can. And now what I have to do is just go ahead and oops, draw a shape and make sure you bring it all the way back to this gray dot and then click on the dot and then it fills in with that color. So I can do the same thing with different colors here. And you can see that you can have different colors as well. So I'm just going to do more shapes here. And this one, let's make it all yellow like that. And then once you're done, you can just click on your selection tool and then it goes off. So this is like quick coloring method. Like if you want to create some shapes and then color them, this is like really super easy. You don't have to pick and drop and stuff like that. You don't have to do all that anymore. Next up is color drop from swatches. So what is this? So for example, I have something, let's just say I have a circle. Now, if I go in here before, you have to select that color and it goes in here. And from then here, you just click and drag and drop, right? But now you have a completely different thing. You can just click and drop and then you can still color it. This is a little different because you'll have the original color selected. So you're not losing that color. And you can also go ahead and fill it with any color that you want. You just have to hold it a little bit and then drop it in like that. So you can just hold it a little bit and then drop it in like this. Next up, where is opacity? It used to be somewhere in the adjustments as far as I know, but now you don't have that anymore. But don't worry, it's still there in its original position. That is, if you click on this and you see this opacity meter and you can adjust it as and when you want. So no, they haven't removed it entirely. It's still there and you can still use it. Next up is adjustments. So we're going to look at this menu right here. You see that there are a lot of new things. But before that, there's one thing that they have changed for adjustments. And that is before you could apply an adjustment only on layers. But now when you click on something, you'll see layer and a pencil. So layer is obviously when you change this, it changes for everything. It's going to undo that. But if you click on pencil, it changes only for certain things. Like I could change that. And then you can mark whatever area you want. Oh, by the way, this works well on even textured brushes as well. So this is amazing. Like you could just go to some textures and then apply it as well. And it works perfectly fine. So that's a new thing that they have in adjustments. Okay, so next up is Bloom. So let me just go ahead, click on this. I'm not going to go into noise and sharpen because they are as simple as they sound adding noise and sharpening things but for bloom i'm going to choose a pencil and i'm going to add a little bit here no let me pick out a different one let's see this one okay i'm gonna add something like this here okay so now you can see is like you can make it more or less or however you want and burn like you know make it really neony as you can see here this is really good when you want to make things very neon. I mean, I'm obviously being careless and drawing however I please, but you don't have to do that. You can make it like really nice so that it looks like a very neony apple. Like this. And look at that. Just like that, you made this into a very neon, bright neon wire around the apple. So Bloom could be used for those things like highlighting something. For example, if you have a portrait and if you want to add some highlights to the face, like the cheekbones and stuff like that, this works really good on those things. And uh, yeah, of course, you can make it more brighter, lesser and stuff like that. Uh, it works perfectly for that. And next up is Glitch. So glitch is again one of those things which I would rarely use, I guess, but I just want to show it to you guys. If I click on glitch, I can use layer and I'm using it on the second layer here. So let me just go ahead and click on glitch layer. And now you can increase the glitch however you want. You can also increase the block size here and also the different types of glitches like wave, signal, diverge and you know, everything that you want. I think some artists would find it very useful, but I'm not one of them. Okay, next up is halftone. This is like one of my favorite things because you use it a lot in drawing comics. So if you click on layer, and now I'm using it on the green layer here, and I'm using full color. 
and let's go ahead and increase the size. So increasing this increases the size of the dots, as you can see, and this decreases the size. So you could do like that and it you get it in different formats. One is newspaper that's completely black and white. And this is something that I would use for a black and white comic because it would really add nice effects. And then next is screen print, which looks a different from full color. And uh, yeah, you could use these half tones for a lot of things like adding more texture to the background and stuff like that. It works great as well. So you could also do it on a certain part of your illustration and not the complete layer. So for example, you could make this one very glitchy and make it just completely black and white. And that would give a completely different vibe to the illustration as well. And the last one that we have is a chromatic aberration. So if I go in here, I'll go click on this and chromatic aberration. And I will use layer because I'm on this apple layer. And you can choose this to wherever, place it wherever you want, like up here, down or whatever. Let's keep it in center. So instead of perspective, I actually like the displays better. And if you go ahead and move it around a little bit, you'll see that it displaces itself you know, a little bit like that. And then you can actually use transparency or blur effect to change these things as well. But I'm going to keep it like this and I'm going to uncheck the background so you can see what's happening here. So you can use this to create some cool portraits and things like that, which is, I mean, it doesn't work that well on this Apple, but you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. Okay, so when we are talking about this, I want to show you something else that's new here. And that is a new tiny menu. So if I'm going to go to layer and I'm trying to apply some half tones. I feel like I don't want this. So I can just click and then you have this really tiny menu, which gives you so many options like, you know, undo, apply, cancel, reset, etc, etc. So you now this is something new. It wasn't there before. We just had a reset button before, but not these extra things anyways. All right. So the next thing is recolor. So we don't have recolor anymore as far as I could tell, but we do have something called as a gradient map. So we're going to try and figure out about this gradient map now. You can find the gradient map under the magic band. Click on map. And then now I'm going to click on layer because I have, wait a minute, I'm going to choose the layer that I want. I'll go into my magic wand and click on gradient map and layer. So now you have all these new gradient maps. So it's basically like recolor, but you don't have so much control when you're trying to choose which you want. But you still have enough control. I'll show you how. So you can choose one of these gradient maps that's already here to change the color uh, doing like this. Or you could also create your own map. And that's one more thing that I want to show you. You can just click on plus and then it'll show you different regions. So you can just click here and it will take you to the wheel or you're going to also use the color palette actually and choose your own colors like, I don't know, green maybe. And this one I'm going to make it yellow, no, pink maybe. And in here, you can add one more actually and give yellow. It's not a nice thing that I'm creating, but I just want to show you that you can use this option to create your own gradient maps. So you don't have to depend on, um, on what's provided with Procreate. You can create your own and you can add as many as you want and click on done. You can also copy these things. For example, I like this gradient, but I want to change just one color in that. So I can just click and hold and then it releases this option and you can click on duplicate and it creates a duplicate. And if you click on that, you will have all these colors and you can choose whatever color you want. So you can just add any more colors or anything like that. And you can do that with this option. So next up is transform snapping to grid. Okay, what is this? So as you might know that creating a repeating pattern in Procreate is a bit of a pain. It's not as easy as Photoshop, but now with this new option, you can actually create repeating patterns very easily in Procreate. So I have this design here. I'm not going to walk you through how to do this in this video, but I'll release a video next week on how to create a repeating pattern in Procreate. So for that, let me just take this as an example. So now let me show you what transform snapping to grid is. So if I click on this transform option here, you see there are so many different options, but there's also something called a snapping. So if you click on snapping, there's option for snapping and magnetics. So what this does is if I click and if I drag it, you'll see these yellow lines right here and it will help you move and snap at right at the center of the artboard. 
Let me just hold that and you can see this yellow line right here and here and it'll tell you exactly where to snap so that it's the center of the artboard. So when you're doing this uh, repeating pattern, this is like a very helpful tool. And uh, yeah, I'll do a separate video on that. So watch out for the next week's video. And that's what the transform snapping to grid is. So the next one is transform bounding box. Okay, if you go into the transform tool and it doesn't matter which setting you're in, now you can see this yellow handle. What you can do is if you just move it around and it shows you the rotation and stuff, you see that it goes and snaps so that it covers the area of that blob alone. So for example, if you have a lot of illustration where they're very closely placed and uh, before you could not actually use this option, like you could not pick only that particular thing unless you used a freehand selection. But now with this option, you can easily transform them because you can actually adjust the bounding box. Next up is quick menus. So a lot of you might not know, but you have something called as quick menus in Procreate. So it kind of helps you speed up your workflow. So a lot of you might not have it enabled. So one thing you can do is go to your settings and go to preferences and click on gesture controls. And in here, you will see something called as quick menu and you see all these other things. You can actually adjust that as well. And you can say four finger tap. I think I'm going to choose that and click on done. So now when I click on four fingers, I get this thing called as quick menu. So before you used to have only one quick menu, but now there are options to add as many quick menus as you want. And now in here, you can actually select and um, make your own quick menus. Now, if you click and hold, you can see all these other things that you can use to set your quick menus to. So this is not preset. You can make your own quick menus. So this is something, one more thing that you have in Procreate 5X. Okay, next up is new cut and paste menu. All right, so if I use my three finger swipe down, I'll see this new copy and paste menu. You have a cut option and you have all these new things as well. So this is one more thing which is like pretty new. I mean, you had all these options before, but copy paste has become duplicate, which is the same as that. And you have a new cut and paste, which is nice to have, I guess. And next up is crop and resize. If I go in here and if I go to canvas and click on crop and resize, now there's an option called settings. So in here, you can change your DPI to whatever you want. Like, you know, if you want some high resolution or whatever, and then you can click on snapping because when you're trying to resize this, it's going to snap to certain things. This makes your life a little easier when you want to resize things. And I think that's it. That's that brings us to the end of this video because I think I've covered everything. The only thing I could not cover is face paint and face paint animation. So because I could not find that option on my iPad, I want to remind you, make sure you update your iPad OS to 14 before you begin all of these things, because a lot of these things, especially the text scribble might not work on your older iPad OS versions. So, and also Procreate released a new update after the 5X to fix some issues and stuff like that. So make sure you install that as well. And uh, I hope you create new things and I hope you like this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell so that you get notified every time I post a new video. I guess I'll see you in the next video where I'll teach you how to create a seamless pattern using Procreate. Until next week, bye-bye.